Lord, we just thank you for bringing us here today and continue to bless us and just let us hear your call and understand who you are and just continue to keep us safe, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. First Samuel 3, 1 through 15, we, well, it talks about how Eli supported Samuel through his calling. We need more Elis to support our Samuels. We need more younger, older generations to support our younger generations. We need more older men to support our younger men. We need more older women to support our younger women. We need more Elis in this generation because we are now having Samuels that are coming through this world, through this time, and we need them to bring us through. Welcome to the Seventh Episcopal District. I fast, I pray, we grow youth in young adult panel discussion. And we're going to talk about youth and young adults in ministry. Uh, today, we are at Israel Metropolitan CME Church. And I'm going to now ask pastor of this congregation, Dr. Ricky D. Helton, to introduce our panel of stars for this discussion. Dr. Helton. Thank you, Bishop Walker. We're so happy to have all of you with us today as we have this very lively discussion during the season of Lent. And we have, Bishop, some very uh, bright stars that are very bright and shining with us today. Uh, our first panel um, person is none other than um, Darrell H. Brooks, Great. who is a junior at Shaw University majoring in political science, minoring uh, in international relations with a concentration in world politics. His aspirations are to preach and to become a prosecuting attorney one day. 
How about that? <laughs> Next to Darrell, we have Mr. Tyler N. Davis, who is in the fourth grade at Shepherd Elementary School. He is very active in church, and his aspirations, Bishop Walker, uh, are to become, in the same light as Darrell, a lawyer and a pastor. Amen. And I might add, um, Darrell is already active in ministry and is on trial and is a member of Miles Memorial CME Church. I want to make sure that I add that. And Tyler is a member of Israel Metropolitan CME Church. And to your right, Bishop, and to my left, we have Zaria Whitley, who is seven years old in the second grade. Amen. And she is at Apple Grove Elementary School. She is also quite active at Israel Metropolitan CME Church. She sings, she prays, she acts in church in various plays. And um, I call her our young Shirley Temple in church. And she wants to be a fashion model one day. And uh, she is very active, <laughs> as well as all of these other panel uh, persons here, Bishop. So here you have these three persons, Bishop, and I'm looking forward to the very lively discussion that I know that I am in store for. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Helton. And I will say to uh, those of you in our listening audience, this is a very diverse uh, panel, um, and they come from different stages in life. But ministry is actually reflected in their presence. Uh, and we have read a scripture, all of us together have reflected on 1 Samuel 3, beginning with verse 1 through verse 15. And we've talked about and thought about what that means in terms of ministry or service in the church. In many instances, churches all across the United States, CME churches and other denominations as well, very, very difficult to find youth who want to serve and to find young adults who want to serve and be active in the church. But we have persons here who understand that ministry is about serving God in whatever way God calls you to do so. In that scripture, 1 Samuel, there is a part in chapter 3 where it talks about Samuel being called by God. And I'm, I'm going to start with you, uh, Brother Darrell. Could you talk to us about what it means for God to call you? Can you talk to us about what that means and has meant in your life? Yes. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me here today, Bishop. Thank Dr. you. Elton, thank you so much. Uh, what does it mean to me? Uh, it, it means a lot, Bishop. It really means a lot uh, personally. Um, not only to be the second generation to preach the gospel, but to have that bond and that relationship with God, to know that he's still there in the time of storm uh, really means a lot. And so for me to be called into the ministry, it's like a promotion. You know, I thank you for your commitment. Now let's take it up a notch. Can you handle this work right here? And so um, I'm grateful um, for the promotion that he's given me. And um, that's what that means to me. All right, all right. You said it's like a promotion. Yes. Take it up a notch. Take it up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Now, now, when you're younger, uh, like Tyler and Zaria, uh, being called in ministry might, might mean something very different. It might mean people asking you to do uh, various things in church. Can you talk about some of the things that you've been asked to do in church? How about you, Zaria? Have you been asked to do special things in church? Well, I guess I have a lot of time. Really? Tell me about it. Well, I've been, been asked, well, my mom has been asked by a lot of people to be, so, to sing, because, because Dr. Wes, we've been, well, we've been practicing. Okay. Me singing break every chain, because that's what people like me singing the most. Zaria, you sing Break Every Chain. Yeah, and take me to the king sometimes. And take me to the king. And people really feel moved by that in your church? Yes, and the person who, re 
who really gets who really gets good when she hears my songs is Reva Carter. All right, thank you, Zaria. I appreciate that. You're a star. You are a star, Tyler. Talk to me about some of the things that you might be asked to do in church because. When we, when we listen to Brother Darrell, he has heard God call him to ministry and God has called him to preach. But sometimes for you, it might mean that people might ask you to do certain things in the church. So what have you been asked to do? So I've been asked to do many things, like pray, read scriptures, and be in church plays. You have been asked to pray in your church on Sunday morning? Yes, sometimes I pray. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, well, sometimes. Uh huh. Well, sometimes I pray too. Is that right? So I'm both of you all feel comfortable praying in church on yes, Sunday morning? And one time I I read a poem uh-huh. for Grandparents Day. Wonderful, wonderful. So I think that's fantastic. Now tell me something. Have you ever, have, have you gone to churches and you've noticed, does it, do you notice it when young people like yourself don't participate in the Sunday morning service? Well, I've been to another church. Uh-huh. And I didn't see no young people go up and pray or sing or read scriptures. Okay, okay. How, how does that make you feel when you go to other churches and young people don't participate? What do you feel like? I feel really sad for them. You really do? So you feel great about the fact that in your church, you can pray and you can read the scripture and you can sing. Yes, I really do, but it's not fair that children and youth and young adults get to pray here, but they they don't at other churches. Well, you know what? Other churches uh, are watching this video. And when they watch this video and they hear what you guys are doing, because you're how old? Seven. And you're how old? Nine. You're nine and you're seven yes. and you're how old? Twenty-one. And you're 21. When they hear what you guys are doing, uh, they're going to want to do more things in their congregation as well. So you all are going to be inspiring other people to do great things. I really yeah. think it's good to inspire people to do stuff like there's this thing, this, there, there's this commercial, and it says, be, it, it shows kids who do stuff for the, for the earth, uh-huh. and so you can be inspired to do stuff to help your earth. It's called Be Inspired. It's called Be Inspired, and you can change the whole world. Amen. Thank you. Thank well, you very much. Tyler, my, go ahead. In my opinion, I really think the other church that I've been to doesn't do scriptures, doesn't let youth scriptures uh-huh. do scriptures and pray and sing. Okay, okay. And I actually don't know, but that's just my opinion. That's your opinion, that they don't allow sometimes youth to participate. But it's important to you to participate, right? Yes. Okay, okay, because there's a need. Do you feel a need to participate? You need to do it, right? Something on yes, the inside. to be involved in church ministries and to be get involved in church activities my brother you are a star i'm telling you i am so lucky to be i'm so blessed to be with you all tonight um let me can i can i ask another question you think okay let's ask another question um and maybe because i remember the scripture and the first part of it was about um uh, samuel Uh, hearing the voice of God calling him and you all did a good job talking about how that feels in the local church and how that feels when God calls you personally the next part of the scripture is the part about a man what's his name Eli Eli. Eli. thank you you got it okay so this man his name is Eli and Samuel hears the voice of, of God but he does he know it's God no he thinks it's Eli calling him he thinks it's Eli calling him. But it's actually the Lord calling him. But it's actually the Lord calling him. You all, you all read that scripture, man. Thank you. I and read it in the car. You read it in the car. Thank you. Thank you. So well, when you, so so when you when you think about that scripture, 
Eli helped Samuel to understand his call. So let's start with Darrell here. Let's start with Darrell and let's ask Darrell, has he ever, how, have, how has God used other people to help you understand the voice of God and to help you understand your call in ministry? Because you have a specific call. Um, it's so funny, you know, I can tell that when the Lord is calling me and when the Lord is on my life, because you, I'll walk to the store uh -huh. and people will look at me like, like there's a glow about you. All right. Um, and there's nobody but God, nobody but God okay. that can um, shine his light mm -hmm. upon you. And so um, I'm, I'm glad that God has chosen me to, to, to be a light in his glory and his, um, in the world personally. Okay. Um, Okay. And so that's how I know um, that the Lord is with me, um, certain things, okay. you know, certain saying, you know, that's how I know. Okay. And Darrell, you are a young man, and you are a young man in a world that leans away from the church and not necessarily to the church. So you must feel some difficulties uh, being a minister at your age. So how is it that people have come alongside you like Eli to support you in ministry and to not only help you hear the call, but to help you stay with it? Do you have persons who, who sort of support you as you go through your walk? Talk about Absolutely. them. Absolutely, Talk yes. about them um, when it gets rough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, when it gets rough, there will be times where I wanted to just give up and say, you know what, God, you can have it, you know, and that's when um, I will have certain friends um, who will come in and say, hang in there, you know, uh -huh. my pastor, Anduho, he will remind me, okay. he'll let me know, he'll say, you know, you got to stay focused, you got to keep going, you got to be real grounded, you got to know what you're doing, uh, yeah. because it doesn't start in the mind, it starts with the heart. Okay. And uh, okay. It, I'm glad to have a good support system. You have um, a good support system. Yes, yes. My church is very supportive. Okay. Uh, my pastor is supportive. Uh, my grandparents are supportive. My family is supportive. And okay. Yeah. Okay. When it, when the time gets rough, you know, I run to them and they give me some strength. They yeah. They give me what I need, and so I'm grateful for that. And it sounds like you got some supportive friends out there too. Yeah, I have some yeah. friends. I have some friends who are in the ministry as well. Okay. Um, and so uh, I'm kind of glad I'm for them. Uh, it's only three of us. Okay. <laughs> but okay. I'm, I'm grateful for them. Okay. Yeah. Now, now let's see. Tyler, um, um, I, want, I want you to talk to us, you and Zaria, talk to us about how sometimes people let you know. How do people let you know? that you are special in this church? How do they let you know that? People let me know by giving me compliments on how I do okay. in, in church. Okay, so they'll compliment you? Yes. They'll tell you, what, like, like what kind of things do people say to you? You did, you did great during that prayer and during the art show, I was helping Chef Daniel. Yes. And I was a sous chef and a lot of people said I did great making, serving, making and serving the food. You really did. Yes. You really did do a good job. Mm -hmm. So when people come to you and tell you you did a great job, what, is that, what does that make you feel about your church? That makes me feel that my church is very supportive and they care okay. about me. Okay, okay. And what does that make you feel about your service, your ministry? Because you have a ministry the service man you were helping chef daniel that's ministry you know you pray that's ministry so how does that make you feel about ministry when people tell you you did great this that makes me feel very great and it makes me feel very well happy and good inside mm -hmm. because all these very nice people out here are giving me very great compliments. Okay, okay. And is that one of the reasons why you feel like one of these days, in addition to being a lawyer, you might want to be a pastor? Yes. Is that right? All yes. right, all right. Well, great man, my lawyer, preacher. I'm going to need both. <laughs> all right. Uh, Zaria, 
what kind of ways do people encourage you in the church and, and, and really help you to feel that your ministry is special here? Well, I think it's because I think it's because when I sing it makes people really good and and so they give me compliments that I've been I've been doing a great job singing. Uh huh. And I've been to your church and there are all kinds of great singers. I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm on television. I feel like I'm in a production when I come in your church. The, the music is so wonderful, but people look at you and they feel that you're one of the most special persons in it. <laughs> is that right? Yep. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, uh, we're coming down to the end now. So uh, in the scripture, the, the, the last portion of the scripture was Samuel uh, is told by Eli. He is supported. He is encouraged. And Samuel tells Eli exactly what he needs to do. Go back, you know, and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Um, talk about what it means to accept a call. Amen. Uh, in this day and time, my brother, Brother Brooks, what does it mean to accept it? What, what does it mean for a young guy like Samuel to say, I hear you, Lord, and I'm, I'm ready? What, what, what's that all about? Talk to me. Uh, to me, that you're never too young or never too old to serve God. Uh -huh. um, um, if it's, it's a great feeling. When it comes to God and when it comes to Jesus itself, uh, to accept the calling in this generation that I am in, um, it's, it's really great. It's uh -huh. really great to me personally. I keep saying that over and over again because I love what the Lord is doing in my life. Okay. And there's, there's, there's nothing that I don't find anything wrong in God because uh, uh -huh. God has been my protector. Okay. Uh, uh, and so I'm grateful once again um, to accept his call and not only to accept his call but to share it to people. Okay. I'm, I'm grateful for that. And um, once again, it's, it's really a good, okay. a okay. good call to accept. And, and, and uh, you have accepted the call to prepare as well. So you're working on your, on your education. You're working. Samuel prepared. He, he was in the temple. He, he was in the temple. He was preparing. He was, he was uh, understudy for Eli. And that makes a difference. And so talk about uh, how you have incorporated the spiritual uh, aspect of ministry into the fact that you're going to school. How, you know, do you, are you taking certain classes in addition to things that prepare you for law? Are you taking certain classes that would strengthen you in Bible understanding and so forth? Yes, yes, actually. Um, my um, advisor not only knows that I'm a preacher, but okay. he has had some um, religion and philosophy classes All right. along with my, um, my major. So, you know, we call them as elective classes. Okay. And um, they are really good classes that I've been taking. Okay. Um, it, it, it keeps me grounded. It keeps me well focused to know that this is what I want to do. But also this is what God wants me to do as well. Uh -huh. um, and so studying his word and not only that, but studying the politics. Uh, it's, 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 it's a lot right there in itself. But um, yes. it's really good. It's really good to handle if you can handle it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, dealing with uh, the religion and philosophy classes at Shaw is really good, really uh -huh. good. I have some understanding professors who takes the time to um, walk the journey, rock, walk the road with me okay. um, with the classes. So it's really good. It's All really right. Good. All right. Well, as we come to the close of this session, first of all, I, I want to thank God for... Um, the stars that I'm surrounded by. And I feel like indeed they are stars because um, these young people uh, offering themselves in service to the church in special ways and a young man who has acknowledged his call to ministry and a pastor who knows how to support young people, that's what the church is all about. So we're praying that ministry through youth and young adults will be supported in the CME church everywhere. God is still calling young people. Uh, not only did he do it in the book of Samuel, but he has done it here on this stage. And uh, as we close, I just want to share with you just a moment about my own calling. Because at 
nine years of age, Tyler, I felt the call to ministry. Um, at nine years of age, I'd had persons um, give me those compliments like you all are talking about and also uh, let me know that they felt that there was a special call to preach on my life. Um, I had a series of dreams. I felt God speaking, but I also want to say that I also heard the voice of those persons, those adults, those older members of the church. I heard their voice speaking to me uh, through the dreams and through the uh, voice of the Lord. Uh, they were a part of the background of the conversation that God and I were having. And so I am here today because a quarterly conference gathered together to meet on a, a nine-year-old child's understanding of what God was saying to him. And the quarterly conference took it seriously uh, and they treated it with dignity and they felt like that my call was genuine and they affirmed it by a vote of that quarterly conference. I remember standing at the chancel rail. I remember standing at the end of the chancel rail while the members of the quarterly conference voted and I remember looking at hands being raised, affirming what God had done and what God had spoken into my own life. I'm here today because a local church believed that a young person could hear the voice of God, that that call would be valid and that that election would be sure. I am praying that churches all across the CME church would take the time to do what we're doing today. This is not some great intellectual endeavor. This is an opportunity to share with young people. But remember this, God took the time to talk to a little boy, not a college graduate, a little boy, not an intellectual giant, a little boy about a call to serve. And that call changed Israel, and their calls will change the CME church. God bless you, and God keep you, and thank you for joining us in our I Fast, I Pray, We Grow Youth and Young Adult panel discussion. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. goodbye.